This is a ransom note, taking away our right to wild camp on the moor and replacing it with a system of permissive access that can be removed by them at any time. Camping's going to become a rich person activity. Here, fork up 15, 20 quid for a campsite. Young people, especially young people from poor backgrounds, aren't going to be able to do that. This is something that deserves to be used by the nation. It's far more than the rights of a few individuals. We're here today to defend Dartmoor and its wild camping rights. So today we will come together to contest and overthrow this unjust ruling. But today is only the beginning. We cannot and we will not accept this erosion of the public's right to access nature. We're in Dartmoor National Park and we're just driving up to an area where we have a right to roam and we had a right to wild camp but now we no longer have a right to wild camp because of the court case brought by a wealthy Dartmoor landowner, Alexander Darwell. So I want to show you what we've lost. You only have a right to roam over 8% of England. That means you only have a right to really access freely 8% of the country. In Scotland, people have had a right, a full right to roam and a right to wild camp over pretty much all of Scotland for 20 years now. And actually, it's, it makes Scotland a much more welcoming place. So it became a national park in 1951. For centuries, it's always been, uh, you know, kind of treated as common land and at least for a century, you're camping on it as well. This little bright orange fungus here, it's called uh, witch's butter. Yeah, that's beautiful little orange fungus that grows on leggy gorse here. I've mapped the biggest landowners and only 15 landowners own half of the national park. The Dulles are major Dartmoor landowners. They own an estate that's at least 4,000 acres in size. He brought this court case to try and essentially challenge the right to wild camp on Dartmoor. They were claiming that wild camping has a detrimental environmental impact. They've seen some instances of, of what's called fly camping, which is to leave your tent or to leave rubbish or the remains of a fire. None of that is actually the spirit of wild camping. I'm not really sure why they were so concerned about it because Stallmoor, which is the bit of moorland that they own, is really remote. It gets hardly really any visitors compared to some of the you know, more popular sites on Dartmoor. It's a very long way from their big mansion house. It's not like we're, we're kind of putting tents on their front lawn or anything like that. Do you know gorse flower is edible? But at this time of year, it's not the tastiest thing. However, if you can get it when it's good, it tastes of coconut and makes a really, really nice tea. Do you want to try some? I am a teacher, but I'm also currently working at a school for students with individual needs. And on the weekends, I take students up to Dartmoor. Oh, they're all right, actually. Yeah, mm. bad, Being able to show young people the importance of being outdoors and how they become leaders but also team players and these skills that you don't get really in the classroom. I don't know, it's just so good for them. It's, I, it's just amazing. You see these young people change and grow and develop. Oh, yeah, oh this is perfect. Oh, who's going to find a pitch first? I teach a lot of outdoor education to children on the autistic spectrum using areas like Dartmoor for uh, educational purposes. Dartmoor is one of the few places that I can actually legally take a group onto a moor and not use a campsite to wild camp in nature, to experience that, to use compasses, to assess the risks and actually learn skills that actually those young people can take safely and use at other areas. After the court case, I came up here to sort of process what had happened and it just felt like something beautiful had been absolutely ripped from inside me. Floods of tears, I couldn't even bring myself to camp that night. Most important bit of equipment. The doggy sleeping bag. There we go. She's not been in it yet. I literally made it this morning. Right, Pip. Come here. Come in. Come in there. What's in there? What's in there? 
Good girl. Sit, sit. Good girl. Happy in there? Gonna be happy tonight at minus five? Yeah? Hopefully. My big concern is that at the moment it's sort of an agreement and it's a very short term agreement where we're being given permission now from Landovers, which is really lovely, but that could be taken away at any point. Just don't step backwards, all right? <laughs> Anything could happen for them to want an increase in payment or reduce the land further that we're allowed to camp on. The students that I take up onto Dartmoor now to do 10 tours and DOE training might be the last generation that can do that, and that's really quite scary for me. Have another song as well because you've seen it in education, the lack of outdoor activities. Students don't really get to access the outdoors as much as they could. You've got um, the marshland down in the valley over there, so yeah. The, yeah. But then you use that. Wow, that's cool. People have just had enough, not just about wild camping, but the way that you know your average person is getting marginalised in this country. Yeah, I think it's it, yeah, it's it's part of a bigger issue, yeah. isn't it? Because at the time where no one's got any money, everything's been ruined in the country, the NHS yeah. has been destroyed, mental health is going up, all these sorts of things, and camping's the remedy for a lot of that. You know, when you're out on the moors, there's no class, there's no status, there's none exactly. of that. Our protest here is symbolic of a bigger malaise throughout the country almost. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah the yeah. fact that the people who during COVID and lockdown, yeah, we were out there clapping and saying these are the saviours of our country and having to go on, to, on strike for a living wage. Yeah. I think it's all part of the same thing, I really do. There are so many psychological articles documenting the impact of the outdoors on mental health. For me, like my own mental health and sense of calm, I really need that because my day, my day job is quite challenging. Today is the public rising up to say we want our right to wild camp on Dartmoor back. I think this has really struck a chord. People are angry. They're upset at losing these rights, but they know that together this is the way to change things. Guys, if we have any rubbish, just put it in the bag so it doesn't go on the floor. Thank you. Put it in the bag, it's better there than on the tree, isn't it? Well, we're going to do that. No, I don't, you know. <laughs> The turnout is absolutely amazing. There's been so many people, all with the same cause, all to come here and promote how amazing wild camping is for our social, emotional, mental health and well-being and to hopefully protect that opportunity for future generations. Really what's needed now is a new law, a new Right to Roam Act that would cement uh, people's right to wild camp, not just on Dartmoor but in other national parks as well and to extend the public's right of access to, to nature and right to roam over the countryside. The huge outpouring of support that we saw, I think is a, is a taste of what's to come on this.